The story of the bald eagle is a story of balance. It's a story of how the unintended consequences of our actions threw the environment out of balance. And as a result, we almost lost the bald eagle. It's a story of how fragile a healthy environment is. It's a story of how vigilant we need to be in caretaking for our environment, not only for the bald eagle, but also for ourselves. In 1975, we had one nesting pair of bald eagles left in the entire state of New York. The female was contaminated with DDT. So for at least a decade, she, she and this pair had not been able to have wild young of their own. People have to realize that bald eagles were here by the hundreds of thousands pre-European settlement of North America. And then once Europeans arrived, things really started turning bad for bald eagles and probably for other species as well. We took large amounts of habitat all along the most accessible waterways. Almost all of the huge super canopy white pines were removed because they made tremendous ship's masts that they were looking for at that time. Uh, they made nice logs for building. They wanted lands cleared for agriculture. We altered bald eagle habitat in a huge way. DDT came along and it was the straw that broke the camel's back. DDT was used heavily late 40s, 1950s especially, and into the 1960s as a pesticide and very effectively. So uh, DDT has a, a subtle effect on the calcium production in eggshells. The remaining eagles that were here simply could not lay eggs that had a thick enough shell that would hatch successfully and then bear new young to repopulate the regions with bald eagles. We knew basically an environmental insult had been done to bald eagles in New York State. Mankind had driven them out. And we felt that if it's within our power and the environment is still suitable for these creatures, that it's our moral imperative to try and right this wrong and bring this species back if we can. So we did. The reestablishment of bald eagles in New York State and to a large measure elsewhere in the Northeast United States really began in, in the planning stages in 1975 when we began the Endangered Species Program in New York. DDT had been banned in 1972 nationally. We felt that the levels were reduced to an amount that eagles could breed here successfully again. We felt there were habitats for them to occupy. There were good food supplies, limited disturbed areas. All we needed to do was find a biological way to get them back here. We wrote up a plan and said we'd like to hack or release young nestling bald eagles that have not yet flown, raise them up, take care of them, feed them until they can fly on their own, release them in habitats that we considered still suitable good habitats in New York State. Bald eagles require a lot of parental care for a long period of time. They're in the nest for three months before they fly, and then they're under parental care for one to two months after they fly. So it's a long-term process of parental care. We were proposing to bring in young eaglets into an environment and take care of them ourselves, of course, without acclimating the young eagles to human beings, trying to do it in a kind of a secretive manner where they don't really start to imprint on human beings, and then raise them up and, and hope that they would survive, first of all, and second of all, the long-term goal, hope that they would actually accept that environment and ultimately stay there and breed. This is a huge gamble because eagles do not sexually mature and breed until they're five years of age. No one in the world had ever done this with bald eagles before. The very first two eaglets that we brought into New York State for our release, our hacking program in 1976, oddly enough, were a brother and sister pair from a nest in Wisconsin. We named them Henry and Agnes. We built a 40-foot tower to simulate a nesting site for bald eagles, built an artificial nest at the top, 
built a blind on one side of this compartment cage tower situation where we could hide as human beings and feed the eaglets while they were in there. And uh, lo and behold, they did actually fly. They did survive. They actually went out and uh, learned to hunt and feed themselves. In 1980, Four years later, Henry and Agnes were found nesting 84 miles to the northeast near Watertown, New York. Uh, what are the chances that you release two bald eagles and four years later, those two eagles have survived, found each other and actually mated and built a nest and had two of their own young? All of a sudden we said, this is not only an experimental design, this is a workable program and we're gonna expand it in a big way. If you fly the shorelines of Alaska, you'll see a pair of bald eagles in a nest every half mile of shoreline. So we approached the state of Alaska and said, would you participate with us? And so for a, a week to two week period, every July for eight years, we would travel to Alaska, visit these nest sites along the way, climb the trees, collect the young babies from the nest till we had our complement of eagles. Over a 13-year period, from 1976 to 1988, at four locations in New York State, called our hacking sites, we released 200 nestling bald eagles, which became the basis for the population of eagles, not only in New York State, but in many neighboring states as well. Eagles are primarily piscivores or fish eaters. So when areas, for instance, in northern Canada freeze up in the wintertime, what are eagles gonna do? They can't get to their preferred habitat, open water and, and get fish and things. So they move south to find open water and suitable areas for them to feed. Our resident breeders will commingle with the Canadian wintering birds during the winter. So New York State provides some really suitable wintering areas for northern bald eagles in the form of open water and food supply. The same bald eagles coming to the same areas, telling us these areas are critical to these Canadian eagles. Anyone who looks into the eyes of a bald eagle realizes immediately the intensity of that animal and, and how it lives its life. This is a, a bird that stands about two feet high, has a six foot wingspan and weighs 14 to 16 pounds with talons and a foot that are as big as a man's hand. So they're formidable creatures. The view from, from the top of a bald eagle nest is the best view on earth. They really know how to pick a tree and pick a commanding view. They'll, they'll typically position themselves downwind so that anything floating or whatever will come toward them where they're perched. But they'll leave a perch suddenly and fly hundreds and hundreds of yards and suddenly snatch a fish out of the water that they've seen. Tremendous eyesight, tremendous power with their bill for ripping fish and with their talons for gripping fish. They're really masters at conserving energy and uh, using it intelligently to, to feed themselves. Long-lived species, they live upwards of 30 years. They mate for life. Once they establish a breeding territory in a nest, that's their territory for life. It's just a very powerful, majestic, free-spirited animal. And I think that was what our forefathers wanted to reflect in ourselves, that that was the independence they were seeking. Back around 19, oh, it must have been 2004, some of the early 2000s, um, one of my peers up there, a woman named Blanche, caught this bald eagle, this big female bald eagle, called me up, and I would meet her, and we would process the bird, putting radio transmitters, etc. on. She read me the leg band that was on this bald eagle, and that's all this eagle had on it at that time. Everything else was gone. And I looked it up, and lo and behold, it was Agnes. And by this time, she's like 30 years old or more. And I went up and, and we handled Agnes, and I was literally shaking to know that this was the first eaglet that we ever brought into New York State for the hacking program, that 
it, our success was totally based on this bird, what she had been through, hacking out, establishing a nest, me going to her nest site for year after year and banding her babies. Um, then suddenly, here's this old female bald eagle in our hands, and I, we were just quivering to know that that was that bird. And ordinarily, we would have put you know, a new wing tag, a radio transmitter, all this stuff. Blanche and I just looked at each other and said, we're not touching her. We're just going to let her go. We're not going to not going to put her through any more. So it was just very magical. The number one threat to the success of the bald eagle is habitat loss. You can reintroduce a species into an area, but unless there's a habitat that's healthy enough to support it, they're not going to be able to survive. We're not just talking about the trees for them to build nests in. Habitat is a big word for the trees, the air, the water, the whole picture, what they need to survive. It's all the same things that people need to survive. We need clean water. We need healthy habitat. We need an ample food supply. If you follow the cycle, everything is connected. It can't be a quick fix. There is no quick fix. What we would like to see is that any time a community has an opportunity to improve its economic status by inviting in or welcoming a new industry or expanding an industry, it just needs to be done thoughtfully and it needs to be done sustainably. And how better to educate people about becoming stewards of a healthy environment and making sure that it stays healthy than by pointing out a bald eagle and showing them that bald eagle is here because your backyard is healthy enough to support it. And it's your responsibility to keep it that healthy. That bird and you are part of the same habitat, have the same needs, and are trying to survive kind of like as neighbors with each other.